My braid is slashing bird. No quarter. I am going to be a odd comfortable ball at all over you from start to finish. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Outside of the Box. Um, fresh off of the heels of the December Norwalk stream. So what better to, for me to do than to have um, a Norwalk competitor and member of Team Shreddit on here with me today. Um, so Corey, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me on. Yes, absolutely. Um, I know you have worked all day today, so I am <laughs> thrilled that you took the time to come on and talk with me. Um, but yeah, there's lots of exciting stuff to talk about. Um, before we get into to the Norwalk stuff from today, just for you know fans that, that don't know you or aren't familiar, just kind of give me a rundown about your background in combat robotics. Sure. Um... My professional life is very um, organized and structured, so I like to think of uh, combat robotics as controlled chaos to an extent. Um, I mean, even ever since as a little kid, I always loved RC cars and um, the the little tykes, like motorized cars that as a little kid you could drive. It was pretty cool. And I always liked to take them apart, and my father had no idea how I did it. He didn't know how... I didn't have any tools. It was just my hands. So uh, I was always, um, he was trying to figure out how I was doing it. Um, my first real interaction with combat robotics on TV was, uh, had to have been before 2000, when I saw Comedy Central BattleBots. I thought it was the coolest thing. Um, just two remote controlled, chaotic destruction machines destroying each other. Everyone having a blast, and I was like, wow, that's awesome. But me being a kid, I don't know how to build one of those. I'll, I'll just watch it on TV, maybe someday down the road. Um, it wasn't until, I think, 2014, 2015 that I heard about uh, an event called Mass Destruction. It was based out of the, uh, North Boston, north of Boston area. And I was like, that's not too bad. That's about an hour away. Let me go. So they had an event in, I think it was Cambridge, where I got to actually meet Jameson Go, Charles Guan, uh, Fred Moore. Um, I met a, a couple other people. Oh, Alex Kreese of Valkyrie. It was awesome. It was just so cool seeing your grandfather in the same box as a little 10-year-old. And you didn't know how it was going to go because half of the time... Every everyone bots flying in all directions. You're like, this is so cool. So I asked around. I got some ideas of what I could do. They they turned me on to a couple websites, finger tech, um, bot kits. Um, I actually have my first robot here. It's uh, kind of like a tombstone clone. It uh, just uses your your kit parts, but I wanted to make it a little better. So I had cutting board, I had aluminum, some hacksaws, drilled a couple holes, and it did the thing. It spun and it drove. That's all I could ever ask for for my first robot. Um, after that robot, I said, I, I like to make a lot of things because I, I see that, I think that's cool. One thing about me is I like to try and break it down and figure out how they did it. So I can see if I can do it too. So my second robot, which I actually met Anthony D'Ambrosio, uh, it was like a Minotaur clone. I don't actually have it. It got destroyed at the event. It was fun. It was cool though. Um, but it was cool meeting uh, Anthony. And it's funny. I've always stayed in contact with him ever since. But now that we're on Shredded together, we uh, communicate a little more. But um, over the years, just building and building, building. Um, that's been my um, kind of my interactions. Um, I started Norwalk when it, uh, I want to say right around the start of the pandemic. Austin was unsure if he wanted to actually run events. He was unsure if it was going to be safe, uh, but he did get the go ahead, the green light to start doing events. So at his older facility, 50 Day Street, I think it's Day 50 Day Street. Um, 
that was where I brought my very first robot, um, taking the knowledge I learned from before I made a robot. It actually did pretty good. I think it went like four and two and I actually got into the finals and got destroyed shortly after. But it's been amazing. Norwalk is probably one of the best things for the sport because it it happens six to six times plus the finals. So you can every other month I'm bringing one robot that's my dedicated one that I I work on. I try and get it a little better each time, and then I bring a goofy one. I might bring something that looks like Rex, the big gyro walking disc spinner, or I might bring this thing that's so tiny that's this big and just throw it in just to see what happens. You, um, I find that you are going to find some new engineers there. You may bring something that's so cool it sparks someone on a tour. And even watching the stream today, I, uh, they kept mentioning how in the tours, they kept pushing for the new bot January event, which is going to be awesome. And I really hope to see some uh, people that went on the tour going. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, you know, that's that's one of the wonderful things about Norwalk. It's it's really accessible, you know, for people to get into, you know, and start with their first robot. And I mean, I could just use, you know, like, I'm sure Tom won't mind me using me as, as an example, but Tom Farkas, you know, who, you know, ended up winning the uh, inaugural rookie award, um, you know, came in with first drink of the day. Now he has made positively hysterical, which I, I love, like, I love it so much. Um, you know, you just never know, like you, you have an idea, you come up with it, you put it into action, you learn from other people and get better. And I like, I think Tom's a really good example of that. Absolutely. And, uh, I think Tom, not to, I don't want it to sound like I'm degrading him. I think he works at a toy store. I think that's what his occupation is. Nonetheless, it doesn't matter if you're the garbage man or you're a, you're a, a university professor. Um, if you want to do it, I don't think do, having, um, I don't think, uh, people, you need to have a degree to do this, um, with sources like send cut sand. Um, there's a company that cuts carbon fiber, it's super lightweight and strong. It's what a lot of people use now. It's super cheap. And I mean, the barrier to entry has never been easier for, um, Anyone that wants to learn active um, learning, I mean, physics, hitting things around, seeing what happens, that's the best thing. But yeah, um, I think Tom Farkas, uh, Kokoto Mane, I'm sure there's others I I'm forgetting. They're like, uh, the, they're like what combat, they en envelop combat robotics to the T because it's, they're there to have fun. They want to make something that, will put on a good show. They're not there just to kill and destroy. Yeah, if they win, they win. But they're there to make something that works and see it work in the box and see it flying through the air. I think that's a lot better than making the next tombstone that's going to rip holes through the walls, personally. Right. And, and, it's, and it's funny because sometimes you can do both. You know, like... Ripperoni is oh, yeah. a great example of a robot that is just a lot of fun, but is also like can kill your face. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That uh that Bob when it came into the scene in the 30 pounders, um, it was something special. And um Anthony, he's on the Omega team, he would he would kept like kind of dropping hints, but he wasn't actually releasing like the the full story to the robot. So when it first debuted, it was fantastic because what he was describing, it was enough to get an idea, but not enough to, oh, this is exactly what it's like. But yeah, I mean, on top of it, uh, going BattleBots, Fred Moore, he's, he's an absolute character and everyone on that team is so diverse and yet there's, um, it's nice that they're experts in their robot. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and and let's let's kind of because I mean you know Ripperoni among many other robots participated in the matches today. Um, I, I would say it was a little bit of a disappointing day for them. Um, you know they didn't do maybe as well as as what was expected, but um, it was just a great great showing overall of of robots. I mean there were so many amazing matches, and we kind of talked about this before the interview, but like. There were, you know, I think some surprises today um, and, you know, some that we, you know, expected to see dominate and did just that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to drop any hints, but I think um, they're probably one of my favorite 30s just because how explosive it is. Um, I mean, the thing just packs a punch uh, and it's cool that he's trying different things like they have treads on it like a tank instead of wheels but the thing is still screaming across the 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 box um but yeah i mean like we had mentioned earlier there was a lot of like strange things that oh you expected the bot and the red square to win but somehow the bot and the red square something stopped after the first hit and then the, the blue square robot won but there were a lot of good matches and i highly recommend anyone when the stream drops, try and find some of those big hitters, Eruption, um, Polywog, um, just from the Beatles and any of the, um, the shame, but Drew, I haven't seen the ending yet. You were killing it. Uh, Angel and, uh, Angel and Alex. It was a good experience. It stinks. The bots looked phenomenal. I was really impressed with the, the way that Bake looked. It looked like a tank, and uh, uh, Wake was very gorgeous. But yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna probably be watching this stream a few times overall. Yeah, and I reached out to Alex, and I I was like, hey, this I I think we need to do a Wake and Bake episode, and he was like, well, they didn't do so so good today, <laughs> and I'm like. Hey, it's not, it's not always about that. You know, exactly. like there's so much more to it. Exactly. It's, I feel like you learn more from the losses than the wins. I mean, uh, no one, I mean, you, every now and then you probably get someone who, oh, they won seven and oh, and they won first robot. But uh, you look at uh, like project liftoff. He went to one of the first events that I ever went to and, one of my robots that could barely even move, it beat him. So, I mean, seeing what it was to what it is now, all the losses pile up and allow it to get as good as it is. And I think them when it, them doing really well in the new bot event um, and then not so hot now and kind of through the events, it, you're going to build that data of what the losses uh gave you um just keep it keep your head up alex and uh angel you don't know what 2023 is gonna hold you don't know that that is very true um yeah because i mean there were there were just a lot of a lot of crazy moments today um because i know you mentioned and i was like like yob ganal like what the heck oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> he popped on the scene around the, the new bot event and i mean he's He's definitely a team, uh, I don't know, do you know the uh, team defective, which has uh, Zack Knight, he has Prometta, and then there's Kronk, which is uh, another version of Prometta, then there's Carmen, they're all real, they're all really, really fast, hard-hitting robots, so when I saw Yob Ganal, and he was part of that team, I had an idea what he was going to be like, but I didn't expect him to eject the battery out of the robot, and uh, the Commenta commentating was even more funny They're talking about how Luke said there's a top bottom sides the battery just doesn't casually fall out of the robot so that is a hard hitting robot and it kind of intimidates me but you got to fight the best to get better so exactly and I mean like that's that's the whole I think the whole point like within Norwalk is just everybody helping make each other better and like upping the level of competition and I think that that's great because it's such a blend of like that and like the fun aspect of it so it's just like the perfect mix of everything that I love about combat robotics oh absolutely and um 
all you can ask is get in as quick as you can. The more the more questions you ask, the more you'll learn. And um, I feel like everyone's so intimidated to go up to Jameson Go or any one of the big names, and they're afraid to ask. You ask them a question, you open them up like a book, and they just want to tell you about their whole life and show you the inside of their robot. So everyone is so helpful to get you in, in the right direction. Everyone wants to see us succeed. You, me, everyone, they want to see it succeed. Um, and they don't want you to put a robot in that half drives. I'm sure there are people out there, but that's that's not the majority. The, everyone wants a robot that's fully functioning. I mean, I myself, I've held off a, a match for a couple hours to for the other guy to get his robot ready. He, I probably, I don't remember, I probably lost that match, but I wanted to have a good match. I didn't want to have the robot limping around. It's all about having fun, destroying our toys. I mean, you can't get more childish than uh, putting an RC car with a, a chainsaw on it and hitting each other and seeing what happens. You, yeah, <laughs> it, it's fun to find out what that's going to end up um, being like, but yeah. Um, it, and I honestly, I, sometimes I'm like, you know, fans that, you know, maybe aren't as involved or don't know, it's funny to see their surprise when they realize how like, you know, open the community is because I can just give like, as an example with the, the stream today, you know, in the YouTube chat, people are just, you know, talking back and forth and all of a sudden Jake Ewers <laughs> in there and all of a sudden Ray Billings is in there and people are like, like, whoa, like, I can't believe that they're in here, but like, that's that's how the community is like the builders i don't think that they act like they're above everyone else i mean they they love the fans and they want to have that interaction and that's what makes the sport so great oh absolutely like i mean uh ray billings uh jake ewer they all play these these big bad boys of uh, battle bots but you hear nothing but great things about both of them i mean they're both family men and they're 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 those are the characters they play on tv but it do, it doesn't portray it doesn't reflect on what they are in real life i mean ray billings and um tyler Wynn, they've been to norwalk plenty of times and i mean you could literally walk up to ray hey what's going on ray how, how are things and he's your average joe i mean he has he has the fame because he's been doing it so long but any one of these guys, they'll, like you said, they'll pop up in, on the stream and they'll just start chit-chatting with you. It's it's awesome because it, it just goes to show it it's so tightly knit. Yes, it will. And, you know, the fact that, you know, builders at every level are interested in what other builders are doing. And I, I think that, like, this today's stream was probably the highest level of overall engagement I've seen on a Norwalk stream thus far since I've been watching. Um, I don't know if it was because the bot whisperer was in the house or, or what it was, you know, obviously it's the finals too. And everybody's really excited about that. It was very cool that, that Pete was on the show um, because he's just like a wealth of knowledge. Um, and I'm sure that the, the folks from behind the bots that do the stream were like thrilled to be able to have him on and have him like, commentating on the show that was just really cool oh absolutely and I, I think it's really cool that i mean norwalk's big on, on the internet but it's no vegas but the fact that pete uh abramson he came down to little uh norwalk connecticut and he was hanging out with everyone i mean and then i think i saw some pictures of ginger smith of uh of um tantrum and there was one other picture i, I thought i had seen of someone from battle bots too but they're coming to this little town because they they want to see this sport grow which is awesome and the way to grow a sport is you bring on the big names like pete abramson oh hey i saw him on tv on battle bots and it, it will spark someone's interest yeah yeah you never know because i mean there there was definitely a time not so long ago where i thought battle bots was all that there was and i didn't know that there was anything else so i'm sure that there's other people out there that just aren't aware 
um, of the great things that Norwalk has been doing. And, you know, once they see that, then they're like, oh, this is actually really cool. And I kind of want to get into this stuff. And like, not just from the stream perspective, but I know they were kind of showing the facility a little bit today and showing the store. And I'm like, my goodness, like the store that they have and the bot museum, like, it's all so cool. And this motivates me more to get there at some point in 2023. Um, Lindsay told me she was going to, to hold me to it. And I'm like, I, I'll, I'll, do, I'll figure out a way sometime. So that's, that's a plan. And it seems like they're growing the facility. So it doesn't cater to just builders and people interested in combat robotics. They're like you said, they have the museum where it's like, yeah, it, it's cool to, to watch it on TV, but to physically stand next to a battle bot that's 250 pounds, like you get Mammoth, or you get I now saw they have Deep Six, or you get something as small as um, I don't know, um, I can't R Ribot's not really yeah, that Rib small, Ribot's there, yeah, I, they're all there, and you what you saw on TV now you can see in person, and some kid was like, oh, that's cool on TV, but to physically see it in person might blow their mind. And then, like you said, they have the store. <clears throat> They're attracting all different uh, walks of life. And I I don't know if they still do. I think they do. The Brett experience where you can physically drive um, one of the Bretts in, in the boxes. And you may have gone to the event thinking you're just going to watch it, let alone now you're driving one of the robots. And you're like, this is pretty easy. I just move the sticks around and it starts to go. And then that sparks the interest in, okay, well, if it's that easy to move, drive it, Maybe it's easy to build, and then you look on YouTube to see some of the videos. And I mean, I try to give the knowledge that I've gained over the years any way I can. And I mean, there are, I get some people like I'll post a picture of my robot on social media, They're like, "Oh, that's cool," and then I'll ask them what they, what projects they're working on, and I almost feel like that's it caught them off guard because they they're thinking, "Oh, yeah, cool, thanks," and then I disappear. No, what I I'm showing my stuff because I want to see what you guys are working on. Like, um, I, I just love, even if it's something as simple as, hey, I made the robot from black to red. That's awesome because it changes the whole perspective of what the robot looks like. You may not see any of the details in black, but now you see them in red. And who yeah. knows? Maybe you make it in pink and then all of a sudden, oh, now it's someone's favorite color pink. So now they want to make a pink robot. Nothing wrong wrong with that yeah yeah you you never know what is going to interest or inspire other people so um that's that's always a cool thing you know like is like you've said before i mean seriously just if you want to make a robot go to walmart buy some cutting boards you know like <laughs> start start there like that's that's a that's a starting point exactly like I I I truly and honestly love his robots. Look at Kokoto Mane, a serial killer. It's made out of cereal boxes. That's awesome. And it, I think the newest one had like some three D printing, but it wasn't anything that no one can access. I mean, I've seen a robot. It, it had the like a one of those big play buckets, and the idea was it just put it over the other person's robot and, and encapsulated it. Yeah, look in your garage. Like, those are half the fun. Like, looking to see what you currently have in your house. Hey, you got a skateboard? Attach a, a leaf blower to it and have it propel itself around the the, the street. You, half of the fun is trying to figure out, okay, how can I make this work? Yep. Uh, and I mean, as I told you, I've got myself a toy excavator and I'm going to make myself a robot out of that. And I don't Absolutely. know, I don't know how it's going to be, but I'm, I'm going to try it. It's going to be version one. And then, then I'll go from there. Absolutely. Cause figuring out half, figuring out how everything works is half the battle. If you have something that, you know, works, that's awesome. Cause now you can focus on other aspects of the robot. So once you learn the other aspects, you're like, okay, now I'm ready to focus on the things that I didn't know, the moving parts. So then you can say, oh, let me take this apart and see how it looks. What What is it doing? And um, that's that's how it starts. I mean, take it apart. Don't be afraid of, I mean, don't buy a $1,000 RC car and start taking it apart. You, you may be a little mad at yourself when you can't put it back together. Go to the dollar store and buy a 
couple dollar RC car, take it apart, see how it works. I mean, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, some of the mini bots at Norwalk, they're just RC cars with foam stuck to them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because I mean, if, if other people's brain works like mine, I, I am far better at understanding something by first taking it apart because then I have an idea of how it goes together. So that's for, for me, that's the way that I, my brain works. Absolutely. You, um, another thing people need to figure out once they figure it out, how do you learn? How are you the hands-on type? Like you said, you take it apart and you look to see how it works. Are you a person where you have to draw it out first to figure out how is it going to be laid out? Or are you the type of person you want to have someone there standing next to you to help you? Those are all great. And there's nothing wrong with any of them. That's just how you learn. And um, just figure out what suits you best, because that's, that's how you're going to do. You're going to succeed. We all, we want everyone to succeed. So figure out how you learn. Yes, exactly. And, and success can look a lot of different ways. Um, if, if I can put together a robot that, that will drive, um, that is success to me, not, not winning a golden dumpster or anything like that. I will, I will just be happy to have a, a product that works. So. Exactly. I mean, I, myself, like I said, I make a one goofy robot and I make one, my robot that I make a little better each time. My goofy robot, I'm trying new stuff every time. Like for example, a one of the common motors that they have in robots, uh, brushless motors. So you have, I, I don't even have one on hand. Basically, there's a spinning part and then there's a part that doesn't spin. The part that you attach to whatever. Um, one of my robots, I just took rubber and I stuck it over the spinning parts and I said, hey, that looks like a, a wheel. So I was driving it around like that. Yeah, the robot was drove terribly, but I didn't know until I tried it. And um, like, like for another one, um, there's a robot called, uh, is it fully defined? It is, it's super wide. It's a great robot, but everyone makes little tiny robots. He makes really wide robots. So just try trying something is um, you never know what's going to happen. Yes, you you definitely never know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, and and you know one of the things that I think I love about Norwalk as well is just like the the complete range of innovation. I think that there's far more bots that use like more of a, a shuffle mechanism for you know getting around and things like that instead of just you know strictly wheels. Like there, I see I see a lot more of that, and I see it being effective. Whereas you know. I don't think in the the bigger box that we've seen quite that level of effectiveness on a consistent level. So like, I think that that's something that's really cool about Norwalk because I didn't even know like that, that JMO had a bot that had that type of mechanism to it. I was like, oh, I thought all of his bots ran on just wheels. But so like, you know, that was kind of a cool thing to, to learn. Um, and there's just, you know, more people that are doing that, I think. Yeah, it's, I think the reason you don't see it in larger weight classes like battle bots i mean they do it in the the smaller the 120 pound and all that um at the smaller scale if you do a non-conventional drive like a not a wheel you get a weight bonus so your robot can be heavier because initially when people did these mechanisms they weighed a lot more than sticking a wheel on so you needed the extra weight to make up the difference now someone like Jameson Go, he can make the the mechanism weigh as much as a tire, so he's able to maximize the amount of weight he puts in. Like one of the cool one of the cool new new robots was uh, Save the Frogs, the STF robot, which was um, the Ribot guys. They they use one of their weapon motors in a thirty pounder, which is kind of crazy. But the first version. Everything was so heavy that when you looked at it, the wheels, they were literally like metal wire, little spike wires to drive. This one put the shuffler in. Now they can actually get a drive in it. But um, I mean, even Norwalk, I don't think I've ever really seen it anywhere else. The idea that um, the wheels, they're called cleats. 
They have little baby spikes. I actually have my. Let me see if I can show. Uh, you can kind of see the little spikes on this this disc right here. Okay. Yeah. The idea is, um, when you're driving across the the wood like a cleat on uh, someone running in grass, the spikes will dig into the ground to add traction. So when you're driving across wood, sometimes rubber will spin out and you'll drift and you don't have the best traction. With a spike like that, um, there's no drifting. It's in, it's sticking into the wood so you get more traction. And it's stuff like that, people trying those things and finding, hey, this actually works really well. Um, you would at other places that use metal, you wouldn't have found that out. So oh, it's it's cool looking at shufflers like a knockoff white. That's a 45 pound robot fighting against 30 pounders. So it gets a huge weight bonus to allow for it to be larger because it's a hammer bot. But that's a shuffler too. So it's cool trying new things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um the the January Norwalk event is right around the corner. Um, you know, like that that's that's a great opportunity for people who want to bring a new bot because it's a new bot event. Um, so that should be pretty exciting um, and, and likely to be another highly entertaining stream as always. Absolutely. Um, I'll be bringing a couple. I, I've hinted here and there, but I'm not going to paint the full picture. I want to surprise some people. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, the new bot events are nice because half the time people are, they're almost intimidated. I got to go up against Jameson go or I got to go up one against one of the WPI guys or the shredder bro guys or any number one of the any number of the the groups or clicks at at Norwalk and that can be intimidating for the kid who wants to try it for the first time you're not gonna you're not gonna do a first drink of the day lifter possibly at um a regular Norwalk where you may face um any one of those intimidating bots you may you may not but you're more likely to do it up against other bots that haven't been refined for years and it's it's really cool because that's that's kind of where um crash fest debuted and look at him now he was doing really good his, right. match, <laughs> his match against silent spring was probably one of the best ones i've seen he went the full three minutes nothing really stopped working on it I think it was just solely because um, Jameson had a a weapon that actually did damage versus his uh, lifter. I think that might have been the only defining factor because they both went head on each other and they both still work. But uh, I, I will yeah. tell you, there was a lot of Crash Fest wins or riot talk in the in the chat. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, I talk to Robert all the time. He messages me almost every day, and we chit chat about robots and and everything. And um, I, I, another one. It's really cool. He he talks about making a spinner, but he doesn't have the the full desire. And it's awesome that he's trying to push um, his robot. It's definitely. I think it looks like a cartoon character and honestly anything that can be designed into a cartoon character is okay with me. Shifty, a tantrum, blip, um, even um first drink of the day and um what what was uh what's other Tom Farkas's robot? His new one is positively hysterical. That that I mean I saw some computer pictures of it. It's a character. It's absolutely it's those are the ro the robots that get the staples of uh Norwalk milk tank. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. And and I didn't I, I, I will have to Tom sent me the, the video of the fight because it wasn't on the, the mainstream, but positively hysterical did fight today. And I need to see it because I've seen video of it moving around and I just I think it's fantastic. I told him it's it's one of my favorite bots at Norwalk at this point. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's fun ideas like that that continue to push the boundaries of what uh people will try. Because you may someone may see it and say, you know what, that's cool. I think I think it has a triangle on each side that moves it. Well, how about we try a square or we try a circle or I don't know, some, some other shape. 
that's engineering and it's passive learning. People may not think it's learning, but what if we try this? What if we, if we try that? And then all of a sudden now Tom's sparking ideas for other people by him bringing a, an idea himself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and to kind of close things up, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned, you know, that when I had talked to, to Anthony, because you were mentioning Anthony earlier, he was he went on and on about how innovative you are and that you can make anything in a very short period of time. So um, I wanted to make sure that I I reiterated that compliment because that's that seems like high praise coming from him. Oh yeah, Tony's an awesome guy. One thing I've always had to learn was um, like there are, there are times where even though I just worked like a double shift, sixteen hours, I still have ideas. But I have work the next morning, so it's all right. How fast can I crank this idea out? So over the over the years, I've I've learned okay, be very quick with your ideas, so that way you can get them down, so you don't lose them. But yeah, I mean, honestly, Tony's one. Tony's like a hype man. Tony's. He's awesome. I mean, all the shredded shredded guys are awesome. Luke, literally, he's he's just. I could see him in the background bouncing. Yeah, keep going, keep going. And then you get Evan. He's like he's like your dad. Uh, Gennady, he can build literally anything. You need parts made. Angel and Alex, they're pushing the boundaries of uh, what smaller robots can do in the bigger ones. Drew, Drew can show up with fifteen robots. All fifteen are going to be ready in twenty minutes, no matter what. Um, and then there's Brandon. He's kind of behind the scenes. I know he um, life got in the way, but he is coming back. And then there's a couple, a couple others that are just tucked in there. Oh, Remy, Remy de Guzma. If if you want a weird looking robot, you ask Remy. But yeah, I mean, the biggest thing I, I the biggest thing I t- took away from combat robotics is it's it's one big group of friends just having a good time destroying each other's toys that that's pretty much what i hear from everyone um and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that it's it's a lot of cool stuff so um yeah 2023 i think is going to be an even bigger year for combat robotics as a whole um you know battlebot season seven is coming out very soon can confirm it's going to be an epic season um and i you know norwalk i think is just gonna keep getting bigger and better so there's there's lots of exciting stuff to look forward to oh yeah jump just jumping into this year when the, I, th- I i think it was this year when they got the new facility going from the old smaller building to this one and what it's even grown over the years is absolutely incredible yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and this this show hopefully will continue to grow as well in 2023. Um, so you know, if if you're if you're watching and you haven't been on the show and you want to come on the show, please let me know. I will I will make it happen. Um, so I I appreciate you so much, Corey, for doing this today. Um, and appreciate everyone for watching um, and supporting the show as always so just you know like subscribe comment give me feedback that's what I love to hear um, and we will be happy to see you next time on the show absolutely yeah I want to see more familiar faces on this show there's a lot of builders that I know they want they want their half an hour talking about all their toys so they got to get the confidence Yep. Just, just come on. I, I am, I am literally the easiest person to talk to in the world. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, we'll, we'll see you on the show.